publicized affair with her Let's Make Love co-star, Eve Montan. On July 18, 1960, Marilyn Monroe began work on her last completed film, The Misfits. The film would also be her co-star's final film. Clark Gable would die two and a half months before the movie was released. Pressures during the shooting of the film were intense. Tensions between Marilyn and Arthur Miller were equally steamy. As pressure mounted, Marilyn suffered a breakdown and returned to a hospital in Los Angeles where she remained for two weeks. Ultimately, the film ran 40 days over schedule. Clark Gable died 12 days after the film's completion. Gable's widow accused Marilyn of creating such stress for the man as to have brought about his heart failure. Prior to the film's release on January 31, 1961, Marilyn's marriage to Arthur Miller ended in divorce. To compound her personal problems, Marilyn began to turn more frequently than ever to alcohol and prescribed drugs. Marilyn committed herself to a psychiatric clinic in New York in an effort to rid herself of her chemical dependencies. Upon her release from the hospital, she spent time recuperating back in California. During this period of her life, she became acquainted with both President John F. Kennedy and Attorney General Robert Kennedy. Numerous literary sources have alleged that Marilyn had an affair with the President. As the often repeated story goes, Robert Kennedy became involved with Marilyn at the request of President Kennedy, who felt their relationship was drawing attention. In April of 1962, Marilyn was back before the cameras at 20th Century Fox, working on a light-hearted comedy, Something's Got to Give. As in the past, Marilyn began causing expensive production delays on the film. Infuriated executives at 20th Century Fox placed her on suspension. On May 19, 1962, Marilyn appeared at a Madison Square Garden birthday party held to honor President Kennedy. This added more gossip to the rumor mills. She returned to Fox and continued to upset the studio's executives in charge by her constant tardiness. On June 8, 1962, she was fired and the film was shelved. Her last day of work took place on her 36th birthday, June 1, 1962. Marilyn adjourned to her Brentwood home to contemplate a threatened Fox lawsuit to continue to abuse her body with prescribed pills and to deal with the end of her alleged romance with Robert Kennedy. On the morning of August 5, 1962, the world awoke to the news that Marilyn Monroe had died in the early morning hours in the bedroom of her Brentwood home, an apparent victim of an accidental drug overdose. And as her passing was mourned, Marilyn's predecessor to the mantle Queen of Hollywood, Jean Harlow, was recalled. Both women lived lives of dazzling highs and devastating lows, and both experienced extreme levels of joy and sorrow, which most mortals would never approach. Marilyn Monroe. Jean Harlow. The legacies of two tragic blondes.